Hey guys, welcome back to part 15 of the Firestore tutorial. In the last video we learned how to execute a batched write, with which we could group multiple write operations together and execute them atomically, which means that if one of the write operations failed, none of the other write operations in the batch would be applied either. So it's either all or nothing. Now there's a second type of atomic operation in Firestore, which is called transaction. With transactions we can also group multiple write operations together, but additionally we can also run read operations before these write operations, to make sure that we only modify the most up-to-date version of a document. This is useful when we want to update the value of a field based on its current value, like incrementing a counter, or based on the value of some other field. For example, let's say we have a document which has a field that counts the number of likes. We retrieve this document, the like count is 9, and we want to add another like to it, setting it to 10. Now let's say between the time when we retrieve the document, and the moment when we actually write the new like value to the database, another client loaded the same document and also added the like to it, setting the total like count to 10. But our client still thinks the like count is 9 and also updates it to 10. So instead of two likes we only counted one and have a wrong value now. But when we use a transaction for this, it will check the document right before it updates the value, and if it turns out that the like count has changed meanwhile, it runs the whole transaction again. So only if all the values we read in the transaction are up to date, it will run all of the write operations together. It will never execute only some of the write operations, the same way we only execute all writes atomically in a write batch. So let's go into our project and see how we can run such a transaction. From the last video we have this execute batched write method, which we called in the onCreate method of our main activity, so as soon as we started our app this method was executed. So let's just keep this method and use it for our transaction. So we click on it and press Shift F6 to change the name. And we change this to a execute transaction. Enter. And now we delete all the content of this method and run the transaction instead. So we take our db variable, which is the reference to our Firestore database, dot run transaction. And here we pass the new transaction dot function. Now the cursor automatically jumps to this part here, where we have to define a type. And for the beginning we define void here. And now we go in between these curly braces. And to get rid of this warning we have to override one method, so we write apply and press enter. To override this apply method which now has the same return type that we defined here, which is void in this case, so we don't return anything. Down here we put a semicolon, and in the supply method we get pass a transaction, on which we now can add multiple read and write operations. And important, we can't put any read operations after write operations. So first we have to define all our read operations, and then all our write operations, otherwise we will get an error. And to run a read operation, we need a reference to the document where we want to read from. So we create a document reference, gonna call it example note ref equals we take our notebook ref dot document to get the document reference. And for this I have prepared a document in our database which I called example note. This is where we want to read the value from. Now we need the document snapshot from this document reference. Let's call it example note snapshot equals and then we call transaction.get and pass our example node ref. Now we get a warning because we have an unhandled Firebase Firestore exception. So we click on it. Then we click on this red little light bulb here. Add exception to a method signature. Which adds this part here, throws Firebase Firestore exception. And this will be handled internally, so we don't have to catch this exception ourselves. And now let's say we want to retrieve the priority of this example node and add one to it. And since numbers in Firestore are not stored as ints but as longs, we write long, we call it new priority equals, then we take our example snapshot dot get long, and here we pass the name of the key in form of a string, which is priority. And we call it new priority because we want to increment it by one. So this is our read operation. If we want to read any other values, then we have to do it now before we start writing anything to the database. But in this example, we will only change this one value. So now we can start writing. For this, we take our transaction variable again, call dot. Then we can set, update or delete as usual. In this example, we want to update our priority. The reference is our example node ref. The name of the field is priority. And the new value is our new priority semicolon. 
And now we also could add more write operations. And the same as in a batched write, all these write operations would execute atomically. So either all of them are applied or none. And before they are executed, our client will check on the server if the values we read here are still up to date. So if our priority value has changed after we retrieved it here, this update method or any other write operation will not be executed and instead this whole transaction will run again. This also means to run a transaction our client has to be online, whereas a batch write can also execute offline, because it doesn't depend on the document state. And the same as in a batched write, we can update up to 500 documents in one transaction. If you want to batch more write operations together, then you have to run multiple transactions. So let's test it. So here is this example node I have prepared, which currently has priority 1. Now when I run the app, our transaction will be executed and the priority should be updated to 2. So let's test this. And this worked. When I run the app again, we will update it to 3. And this whole process runs as one atomic operation. If two clients would try to add plus one to the priority at the same time, one of the transactions would run again, so we don't accidentally only add one to it. Now a few more things. You should not modify the application state from within this method here, because first of all it can be executed several times if the transaction failed, and it doesn't run on the UI thread. So if you want to get the value out of here and update something, then we have to change this type. So let's say we want to get the new priority out of this method and display it in a toast message. Then we change this to long with capital L. We change this here to long as well. And now we also have to return a long, which is our new priority. Now we can remove this nullable annotation. And in order to get this new priority out of this method, we go before the semicolon and add an unsuccess listener. And as usual, we pass a new on success listener. We already know this. But now we get past this long here, which is our new priority that we return from the supply method. And here we can use it in our app. We can also rename this to a result, which is a better name. And now let's show a toast message in here. As usual, I take this live template, gonna write new priority colon space plus and our result. And of course, as usual, you can also add a non-failure listener, but we don't need one here, so we leave this out. So let's run it again. Our priority is still 3, and now when we restart the app, we should increment this to 4 as usual, but additionally, we should also show a toast message with new priority 4. And this worked. Let's try it again. Perfect. So this is how you run a transaction in Firestore. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for any upcoming parts of the Firestore tutorial. Take care.